Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to see you here. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had a great time uh, uh, last week, so we have now we will have um, uh, hard times. So we we will need to work in order to improve your ideas and uh, to make more sustainable in into more sustainable way. And today um, uh, we start we will start from the problem raising why we started Future Preneurs program, and for today we invited our. Uh, uh, well-known guest from uh, Baltic Economy Forum, Audrone um, Leo Schute. Yes, and we know her for at least two years in a row. So she, she had she had helped us to prepare the cases which is lack of, uh, sustainability. Uh, we been introducing that uh, last year, but uh, we found out that people do not really. Uh, going to do in this, going into deep too much in these cases, so we skipped for this, uh, yeah, term. Okay, so in, uh, I'm not, I do not want to take too much time for me. So, welcome, applause to Odrone. I'll like, give you the place to have, okay? Thank you. Yeah, first of all, I probably should introduce myself that I have nothing to do with economy. It's Baltic Environmental Forum. <laughs> yeah, um, I will shortly introduce myself and then I will ask you also to tell a little bit, like not all of you, of course, but some of you. Right. Um, I'm actually sitting on two chairs. I'm an environmental expert for probably more than 20 years. And time by time, I'm leaving environmental field and I'm just going to work with business, with municipalities, with governmental institutions, because um, because the work with sustainability, work with, with environment, it's sometimes you you feel like you you do nothing because it's a long term goals you you're trying to introduce and it's really difficult to implement. Baltic Environmental Forum it's one of the largest environmental organizations in Lithuania. And we do work with many issues. We say that we protect nature not from people, but for people. And that's the main difference probably from those um, NGOs that campaign, that really protect very much. And we say like, we, we, we save only what we know, we save what we understand. And we work with um, such like really new topics like agroecology, uh, we do work with sustainable business, but most of our activities are on biodiversity and nature. And also, I, I work with companies. I used to work um, at the Association of Responsible Business of Lithuania for several years, and at the moment I'm also working with the uh, Ministry of Innovation and Economy, and we have the, uh, OEC, the national contact point for implementation of OECD sustainability um, code, let's say, it's, um, it's a not legally binding document and companies do not have to, multinational companies do not have to comply with that, but the country takes the obligation that companies, multinational companies that operate within Lithuania or Lithuanian companies that operate outside Lithuania, they should keep in mind sustainability principles and it's not judicial um, solution of the complaints, but it's complaint mechanism, it's mediation mechanism. And in Lithuania, we're going to have first case, environmental case, by the way, but I cannot disclose it yet. Well, um, my sustainability habit, well, I, I thought that it's sustainability habit, and um, um, I think sustainability is a tricky thing. On one hand, I thought I'm sustainable because I'm traveling every day from Konas to Vilnius. I work 11 Konas, work in Vilnius, and I thought it's so sustainable I'm going by train. And recently I calculated my ecological footprint. I'm traveling 1,000 kilometers per week. I'm not sustainable. So my new sustainability habit, I'll be working a couple of days from home. <laughs> and what sustainability habit you have. Just talk a little bit with each other. 
what you do in sustainable way, how you contribute to sustainability. And I will ask some of you, tell your neighbors sustainability habit. Like five minutes. What do you do in sustainable way? <laughs> Are you sustainable? No? Yes? Right, who would like to share? I see that it's quite an interesting topic. Some people are silent, but some people are really trying to identify. Who would like to share? Quickly, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I use as less plastic as possible. That's really annoying, like people that just use this little plastic bag and everywhere, and I try to do that, you know, ecologic way, more sustainable way. Okay, I didn't, but okay. Uh, so um, I'm trying to walk by my foot more. Um, I also um, don't use plastic bags. Um, um, take everything in my hands uh, as I can carry on. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. Maybe other ideas. Well, I don't know if I'm very sustainable, but uh, I sort the trash out. You know, plastic paper and everything. I don't use plastic bags. Uh, I have a special shopping case for it. And uh, I'm uh, not very sustainable like you are, because I'm traveling either by train or by car to Konas Vilnius. So, not a very ecological footprint right there, but you know. <laughs> trying to do something. Right. Who else would like to share? I live 20 meters from my work. I do not buy fast fashion clothing, so I think it's very important. And usually buy second-hand clothing. And of course, no plastic bags, and do not buy like uh, single-use cups to take out coffee or tea. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's rather easy to be sustainable. Well, not rather easy, but um, it's easier to be sustainable on your personal level, the lifestyle. But when it comes to business, it's really not that easy. And um, to create sustainable company, I don't know what's easier to create from scratch sustainability or to redesign the company and to make it sustainable when it already exists. Uh, from my experience, I would say that you, as, as those who are starting businesses, who are developing businesses, you may redesign it from the very beginning and you may prevent most of unsustainable uh, things just when you design your business. But let's have a small like, overview of sustainability. I'm pretty sure that you know what it is. I'm pretty sure that you know what a responsible business is. But um, before you start thinking about problems, let's, let's look a little bit at the sustainability. 
Um, yeah, future preneurs, I think, are those because it's about future, about future we want, about future we would all would like to live. And it's about your impacts. It's about understanding basically what is your impact right now and what is your impact in the future. That's the most important thing. And maybe the word futurepreneur would, should, be, should be all entrepreneurs called futurepreneurs because what you design now, the results will be in the future. Uh, innovation, it's the daily word. If earlier it was like something we didn't talk too much, now innovation is everywhere. But um, despite the fact that Europe in all documents stresses that innovation is very important and the growth we are experiencing now, it's mostly driven by innovation, that every euro invested by EU investment programs will Come, will, will, will return 11 euros in 25 years and that it, it will create a lot of jobs but still if you would look at the, at the, at the uh, graph where Lithuania is sorry the technology doesn't work it should work no it doesn't work on that screen <laughs> right but you see the, uh, the, the line the blue line, that's the average EU innovation level, and Lithuania is still lacking a little bit. So you have a huge potential to, yep, to, <laughs> thank you, um, to make Lithuania close at least to the average of innovation of um, EU. There are different, um, different um, researches and in many researches in Baltic Sea region, Lithuania is among the leaders, so we are innovating a lot. Um, Green Biz Group, it's United States um, group think tank for responsible business and every year they publish a report on responsibility and this year they published overview what, what, what's happened in 2019 and they said that yes a lot of things changed. I am not sure that it changed because of uh, Greta's Fridays for Future. I'm not sure that it, um, it's changed only due to the evidence on climate change we have. I think many, many factors um, where they came together and environmental issues, they became mainstream. And that's why environmental and social government became very important for investors. In our days, more and more investors at checking how do you do with not only financial things, of course financial things are most important, but social and environmental impact is also very important. I was listening, I couldn't participate in the launch day of the Futurepreneurs, but you've heard many, many presenters and we, everybody stressed impact. Everybody was saying that it's important. And many new topics came into the Agenda. It's about mainly about food systems. We're losing food systems. Uh, we have a lot of food waste and we, we talk a lot about it and we do have some nice initiatives, but there is no systematic approach and we are losing a lot of uh, energy in produ producing food and we are dealing with waste. We don't know how to deal with it. Uh, we do have problems still on transportation and a lot of companies are responding to that. Uh, more and more you talk about circular economy, circularity. Um, on the one hand, it's a lot about recycling, but it's not recycling. It's basically, or it's not this recycling, what we have now, because what we do now, we downcycle things. Uh, we, for instance, if we are talking about recycling of, of electronics, so we just make small pieces of electronics and we take the things we just want to reuse and uh, metals uh, from it and we reuse only metals but most of the things they just last. So we are downcycling down things. And new, uh, new models, new business models appear uh, in, the, in, the, in the economic world about reuse, uh, about circularity. 
Well, zero net carbon um, communities are appearing, companies with zero emission goals, companies with uh, zero climate impact are appearing on the world. And Greenpeace Group is stating, yes, we talk a lot, we have nice ideas, and now it's time to act. Now it's time to act to all stakeholders to governments to create favorable environment because up to now sustainability was like it's volunteer if i want viral there is legislation i have to comply with legislation and if i want to be sustainable so it's on my own there were very little incentives in lithuania we really have little incentives for business being sustainable and it's also about consumers uh, when i ask you about habits uh, sometimes our habits like, like they are they are related to the market, they are defined by the market. Well, if you want to be sustainable, you cannot, because there is no bad service. It just does not exist. On one hand, it's bad. On the other hand, for futurepreneurs, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Because you may create a lot of those services. Um, in Finland, what they, what they do for already maybe 10 years, the government has designed and established and supports the think tank for sustainability. It's called CITRA. And CITRA also publishes a lot of research and they, every second year they do global circularity forum. On, uh, they invite companies, they invite businesses, they invite astronauts to talk about Earth to talk about sustainability, to talk about circularity, and what th this is the last year publication, last year report on the trends, mega trends, what is happening in the world, what's the most important, and they say that yes, ecological re reconstruction, ecology, ecology is the most important thing, but also. All those ecological problems have to be solved, taking into account the aging population. Because this is a problem. Um, and the population is very diverse. So how shall we solve those problems? There is a huge gap in it. Uh, the, environment, the environment, we consider it environment for many, many years only as a resource. Only resource. Now we have to think about improve improvement of environment. We have to understand that we're just part of the environment. Even the, the, the concept itself, we say environmental protection. Basically, environment doesn't need to be protected. If we would disappear, environment would survive perfectly. It's human protection because we're protecting ourselves not environment, or that environment that supports our well-being. So um, there is huge change in, uh, in, 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 in the understanding of traditional economic terms. Um, there is change also in technology, and it's, it's embedded everywhere. IT things are everywhere, and we will not escape from that. And that creates a lot of um, legal problems, a lot of ethical problems. Do we have all solutions in place? Uh, will it help to save Earth? Probably yes. And there is also some social things that are happening. Uh, well, the world is not the same as it was 10 years ago. We have all um, openness, transpar transparency we have. The governments, companies cannot act anymore as it was, and it's obvious, especially in Lithuania. Uh, we, we, well, all Lithuanians know Grigeo and the entire factory case, where the um, the risks that were not taken into account, they they just became quite costly for the companies. So you will be designing your businesses, taking into account all those trends even if you will not take into account those trends are in place. Um, yeah, and one, the most important thing, at least till 2050, it's the growth of the population. Uh, yesterday we were like seven, nearly 8 billion people on the earth. There is prediction that in 2050 we will be 11 billion people and that will be stable we will not be uh, growing the population will not grow anymore but let's see how it will be but at the moment all those nearly eight billion people they have the needs 
And when, uh, when we talk about sustainability, we talk about satisfying our needs and leaving opportunity for future generations to satisfy their needs. So due to the globalization now, the needs in, uh, I know, some African country uh, or in uh, Asian country or in European country, they are very similar because we all know what is good life and we need new things, we need new resources, the consumption is still growing. And I'm not saying that the population should be regulated, but this is the huge resource question that is urgently has to be taken into account. Yeah, let's have a look at the very, very, very long history. 4.6 billion years ago, when the Earth was formed, there were different geological eras. Um, this is how the rocks were developing, and that's how we know what is happening. We have imprints in rocks. We, we have imprints of animals and no plants, and that's how we know what happened. And let's look at the Paleozoic and Mesozoic era. It's nearly half a billion years period when fossil fuel was formed. Half a billion years. We are living here in the Holocene. And the human, the Homo sapiens appeared nearly 10,000 years ago. And in 200 years, we want to take out all fossil fuel to put it in the sky, let's say. And then we are saying like, okay, climate change, maybe it's happening, maybe it's not. Well, for years, I'm working 20 years, and now it's first year we finally recognized, yes, it's a problem. It's a problem for the quality of our life, but it's also an ethical problem because we never know for what purposes we will need fossil fuel in the future. Yes, welcome to the new era, because if before 2012, I would say we're living in Holocene, new era. Now we are living in Anthropocene, because humanity is leaving imprint in the rocks. We transfer rocks three times more than river forces. We build roads, we build dams, we use nuclear power, we change the surface of the earth in two million years, or in three million years, or in billion years, somebody who will be exploring geological layers, they will see us living here. We're changing the rocks. And we're changing in other way than, uh, than it was before, and the remains will be very, very different. So Anthropocene really creates new conditions for business. It's the age of man. It's the age when we, uh, what we inherited from two years industrial era, from the developing of industry, and now we have probably more problems than we would thought in the beginning when we were creating our well-being. Well, the new global context, how it's reported by World Economic Forum, um, they say that we do have a huge globalization happening, but at the same time, local things are becoming more important. They are either disappearing, either we're trying to preserve them, but they are becoming very strange. So basically that, the preservation of local things is very important, but we have to take in, into account all global things. Uh, demographic change. We, we are aging population in the United States and the Western Europe, while the other part of the world is young. And what's very interesting that millions of women are becoming company leaders especially in Pacific countries. And that will create a huge difference also in business culture. Um, we have a raise of the economic power of India, of also Pacific region, and the middle level consumer in that region 
what kind of consumer it will be. Because if you'll be designing businesses, you'll also be designing not only for European market, not only for maybe this Western market, but also for the whole world. Not Today, half people on the earth from those nearly 8 billion people live in cities. What does it mean? Half of the population live in cities. It's huge density, it's transportation, it's housing, it's huge pressure on the environment, a lot of social problems. And we have to take into account, well, digitalization, we already have mentioned that. And environmental degradation and impact on health. We have more and more evidence that the uh, alien things we produce, alien materials we produce, they are not the same as, as they are in nature. In, uh, in 1987, uh, when the sustainability concept was created, let's say, and it was released to the world, uh, the report where it, it was mentioned first time was called Our Common Future. Already in 1996, three Danish scientists published um, the book. Uh, they were chemists, and they titled the book Our Stolen Future because they talked about chemicals we are producing and about impacts on hormone system and they predicted that if we will continue in the same way, we will not have a future. It doesn't matter climate change, it doesn't matter world diversity, we will just disappear as a species, uh, as, as a humanity, as a human sapiens living on this earth. Um, and this is the history of um, how World Economic Forum um, see the risks, global risks. They look at the risks for already 13 years and just look at the colors. If from 2007 the economic risks were the most important and then the um, social risks, red ones, they, they are becoming more and more important. Since 2017 it's green, it's environmental risks that are, uh, that are very, very important because the impact on the more basic, basic, the impact on Earth, the impact on landscapes is becoming more and more uh, powerful than we could manage it. So, what would be better to be pessimist or optimist in this context? Because usually, um, People don't like this threatening uh, part of the environmental people, uh, doomsday and everything is bad. But we have to understand that the pessimist is a world-informed optimist because we just have to know and we have to operate in conditions we are. Um, nearly 50 years ago, group of economists, group of um, governmental officials, a group of um, business people gathered in Rome and uh, they, they called themselves uh, futurists. It's the Club of Rome and there is famous book The Limits of Growth. And they put in the mathematical models, resources, industrial output, population, food and pollution and they looked at the tendency, so it's, it's just a math, nothing to do with the, um, with the fantasy. And they said, okay, if we will continue in the same way, and we, we will we'll have 100 years. So if the economy will not change, if business will operate in the same way, 2070, that's the, that's the doom day. And, um, I cannot tell you any good news because in 2014 Melbourne uh, Sustainable Society Institute they released the report where they looked at the tendencies uh, foreseen in the 70s and you can see the puncture line that's the prognosis and the line that's what is happening. So we are approximately using the same amount of resources. We pollute a little bit less but we still produce a lot of um, the production is growing, the economy is growing, and the population is also growing. So nothing has changed. And it has to change, because otherwise we're just not 
having the resources to, to do our businesses and to have the welfare we want. Uh, the Club of Rome is still alive and it operates. It, ha it has released probably more than 40 different reports. They work a lot with Europe and now reacting to the European Green Deal, they also um, put the planetary emergency plan on the table and they say again, let's do something. They have a list of actions and they say about how to internalize costs because now we mainly, uh, mainly um, for instance, if uh, we mainly put taxes, we do not tax that much resources and we do not tax the polluters. For instance, the business that is producing in an environmentally friendly way, that business that takes into account social things, in the market it competes in the same, at the same level because they compete with price. And of course, it's easier to sell the product if you, if you don't care about resources, if you don't care that much about people. Business, it's about price, isn't it? So uh, they, they, are, they are suggesting a lot of different changes. They are suggesting, uh, they are suggesting to pay attention to uh, such things like Creosphere preservation plan, because this is what we forgot actually talking about climate change. Even today, if we would stop all activities that are influencing climate change, that are influencing the green gas house, green, greenhouse effect, in the next 100 years, the temperature would raise by one degree. Because the nature, it's a system, and we started it. And the permafrost is melting, methane is getting out. And we cannot stop that. At the moment, we do not have even technologies. We don't know how to do that. Um, so we do have some solutions. Uh, we have offers of different commitments. Uh, there are different actions that are on the table at EU. Shall we take it? Because that's not so easy. It's about quality of our life. It's about more taxes, it's about um, new programs, it's about change. And basically, probably the most important thing, it's about change. Humans don't like changes. And, yeah, let's see. Because it's not the first time when Club of Rome is offering help. Uh, one more thing about ecosystem service. Well, if you are not still convinced that environmental issues are most important for business, I would say we look at the ecosystem not only as a resource of something. For instance, this is the figure, uh, numbers from UK uh, ecosystem service valuations. The timber values, for instance, there is just under 10 million per annum, while biodiversity pollination services, what bees are doing, cost 430 million and we would, we would think why but yes we do have technologies we we do use artificial pollination in green uh, houses in Spain when we're growing vegetables but imagine if we would have to pollinate the whole world it's possible technologically we can we can do that this probably would be called innovation but that would cost a lot and um, Ecosystems also, they are providing for us, uh, they protect us from floods. Uh, there is a lot of things in nature we imitate from nature. We use the nature examples and we are making things according to the nature. And if it will disappear, for instance, some plants, uh, what might be used for medicine. It's invisible. The economic things are invisible in nature and it's still it's starting to be calculated how much does it cost, but it's the beginning. Of course, if you would like to buy a house with a nice view and if you would like to buy a house in an industrial region where you see just the wall behind you, this is understanding probably the value of the landscape. But there are many, many other things what should be taken into account. And there is nice exercise what you could do yourself calculate your footprint. Um, it's uh, the, the network, um, 
ecological footprint uh, network, we calculate the footprints of the nations every every four year. And it, they say that if everybody would live like Europeans, we would need three Earths. If everybody would live like a United States citizen, we would need five Earths. If everybody would live like Bangladesh citizen, we would need one fourth of Earth. But probably um, this is about style of life, not, not about country. And the ecological footprint, just for to imagine it, it's let's say if we would put a doom. And the Vilnius, how much of territory we would need to satisfy the needs of all citizens and to assimilate waste, to, to have all things we, we need for our lives. So you can calculate, of course, the footprint for, for your company, and some companies are calculating it, but it's more, more probably like a marketing instrument where you can see and to show and to measure your impacts. Yeah, transparency. Why it's important to think about environmental pro problems when, when, when designing your business? Because you are transparent. Many things happen in one second, and in one second somebody may write post, may look at your report, may read it, may comment it, and risks of the reputation, risks of being not sustainable, I think are higher and higher. Well, we environmental economists they're saying that we have very narrow sustainability window now and we have to go for it everybody like as a person as a business as a country because natural resource demand and supply they're getting narrow and narrow and if earlier we still had time it was probably not that polluted environment and we we didn't have that big demand of, of resources now it's different yeah so in my mind sustainability it's a lot of things but it's about change it's about really really deep change in our minds really understanding sustainability a little bit different than it's drawn usually in the textbooks and yeah in i would say that sustainability from the classical this picture it's a couple of projects, a couple of nice reports, maybe like several hundred companies who are trying to do it, some strategies, and that's it. And that's reality. That's what sustainability is now. We're trying to combine, to compromise goals of environment, social, and economic spheres. But indeed, could you imagine economy without society and environment? Probably no way. Could you imagine society without economy? Probably yes. The way at times. Or could you imagine environment without society and economy? Easy. And that's the main thing to understand. And these are solutions of your problems. Just think in these terms. Understand where you are and think about responsibility against, against the environment you are living in and that provides everything for you. But unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the theory. There are many interesting instruments to look at sustainability, and some of them, like they, they offer to have a compass. When you have business, you may look at nature, economy, society, well being, um, and to think about these things, and this is the guidance for your business. You may use principles of natural step. You cannot extract more than can be safely contained or reabsorbed. You must not disturb delicate balance of ecology by introducing alien things to nature. We must not impact the life supporting system because they must not they, they must to be kept. And it's about equity. It's about equity because human all human all humans, they, they have the same rights and they should be, have access to the nature mm, benefits equally. You all know sustainable development goals, yes? Sure, you all know. And uh, sustainable development goals, I know how many of you used the uh, advice of the Alex Gibb who suggested you to use the nice app, SDGs in Action? Yeah, you used? Yeah. 
So please use it. I think it's a nice, nice app, and you can you can do a lot uh, when uh, when uh, when trying to to see what what is your impact, your personal impact. Uh, as a company, you may look at the eco design principles. I think this is very important, and eco design. Um, Eco-design creators of that concept and those who, who apply it, they say that 90% of environmental impacts you may prevent when you're designing the, project, the, pro the product. And this is about thinking from where you are getting raw materials, how you are producing, how you're packaging, how you're transporting, how the product, what kind of impact it does during consumer phase, and how it is recycled uh, recycled, reused, and can it be raw material again? This is the basically the um, basis for the circular economy. And EU has calculated how much we could save um, if we would use some very simple eco-design measures like standby, simple set of top, top, uh, top boxes, etc. But eco-design is probably the essential thing to think uh, when you're thinking about your business in our days. Eco-efficiency. Usually I'm asking, is it happening? And people, some people have doubt, some, some people not. I think, yes, eco-efficiency, dematerialization of production is happening. And this is also might be trend for your business. This is the, um, the first... Uh, sound recovery in equipment I didn't have, but the second one I had, and I also had this, and I also had this, and I also had this, and this, and now we don't need it anymore, isn't it? It's dematerialization, and that helps a lot for environment. Uh, of course, we have to think about uh, impacts of the, not direct impacts of the energy we're using to all those things. Um, another example of the, um, of the circular economy, it's self-healing rubber, and we have it already. We do have it. We do have also the self-healing concrete. That's how we can prevent the demolition waste. Uh, circular economy might also use a lot of principles of biomimicry. Biomimicry is imitating the features of the nature. Uh, for instance, um, the lotus effect, you know that it's nanoparticles, small, tiny, 10 minus 9 uh, small particles, and that's how the lotus leaf is clean all the time. We used a lot of uh, birds shapes when we were designing trains. The butterfly, the color of the butterfly, the, the, the butterfly doesn't have color. It's just the shades of tiny parts of the butterfly. Uh, butterfly wing, and that's how we can produce invisible clothes. And they are, by the way, in, 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 uh, they are developing at the moment. The spider, this is already, I will show you later on an example of the company who is using that. Uh, the spider is producing thread, which is of the same strength of, as a steel and the same elastic as nylon. In what temperature we produce those articles? And in what temperature the spider produces its thread. It's a lot of we can learn from nature. The house of um, I know the English word for termites. Maybe maybe it's the right word. Hmm? Termites. Yes, the the the, uh, the termites hill. It the temperature of their living space. It's all the time about 20, from 19 to 22 degrees, while outside temperature it's 9, minus 9, plus 40. How we do that? We're working a lot of renovation. So it's a lot to learn from nature, a lot to, to imitate, a lot of innovations are on the way, a lot of things are under development. And yes, circular economy, the um, Circular economy principles were born long 18 years ago in 2002, but still it's not boosting. And I would say if you are developing a business and it doesn't reflect the circularity principles, don't do it. Uh, 
because legislation is getting more stronger and stronger and uh, the things that are thrown away, the things that are not used several times, they will really not have future, they will disappear from the market. So sustainability basically it's a process, we're learning about it all the time. We have to take into account all dimensions. And there is no advice what is first, financial, environmental, or social. You decide. You decide, but you have to think about all those trends about the world we're living in, and you have to respond. You are responsible for the impacts of your business. And when we talk about sustainability, we never talk about short-term benefits, short-term gains, gains, and it's a long-term vision. You have to accept that, and I think it's now must more and more accepted by investors, by angels, business angels, by, by everybody, and this thing is very important. And you have to take into account that many consumers, and still many things are based on the short-term economic benefits. Yes, that's a paradox we're living in. Corporate social responsibility, responsible business. In the 70s, the, the, the mm, laureate of Nobel, Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman, economist who received Nobel Prize, he said that the business of business is business, and business is responsible when it has profit. That's the main. Um, obligation of business. But in nowadays, I think we have to understand that we, we all, as consumers, as um, business people, we are responsible m for more things because the natural resources are so limited and impact is huge. Corporate responsibility. Now, this term is becoming uh, very known. It's becoming probably, I hope, really important. Um, we did in 2015 research on how corporate social responsibility perceived in Lithuania, in Lithuania and how business understand it. And the most uh, probably um, irritating thing was that it was understood as a marketing thing only. It's about how to write a good report, how to do some philanthropy, to support somebody, to give money, but it's not about your impacts and it's not about thinking about well-being of all society. There is standard for sustainability. As you know, there are standards for quality, standards for environmental management, standards for IT security, and there is also ISO standard for corporate social responsibility. And they define it as activities that take into account principles of sustainable development, that we talk and uh, discuss uh, sustainability with all interest groups. They comply with international treaties and laws, and it's integrated. It's not something separate, but it's within business and it's inside business activities. So basically, it's about people, planet, profit. It's a lot of things to be to be discussed, a lot of things to look through, and it depends on your, on your business model. Let me show you three examples what I've chosen to, uh, for many years, and I just like them. Uh, for, instance, inter for instance, interface. Leading flooring company with net sales more than $1 billion. What do you think they sell? They do not sell flooring what they sell, because they, this company, one of the first companies in the world have zero goals, zero emissions, zero waste, everything is zero, zero impact company. What do they sell? Hmm? For what? But it's flooring company. Because you don't need carpet, you don't need flooring, you need beauty for your eyes, you need softness for your legs, and they're selling service of carpet. They're selling service 
for five years, for three years, and then they're taking back. And they're producing flooring in such a way that they count that in five years this raw material will come back. And it's so easily recycled. This is real recycling. Because you need less energy. When you design things for recycling, you need less energy, you need less efforts, you don't need additional materials, and it's much more easier. And I would advise you to look at the interface founder, Roy Anderson, TED Talk. He, he, he talks how he became how he came onto the path of sustainability. Uh, somebody just put the book on his table, Ecology of Commerce, and when he read it, he understood that he's robbing his children, that it was ordinary carpet factory polluting everything. And it was like transformation, personal transformation. Um, another example, this is the um, small, tiny company and I liked very much, it was the example was presented in the, in the um, Global Circular Economy Forum. Um, the guy from Netherlands came to Trinidad and Tobago and he was selling coconuts and he faced the problem that there is no pellets in Trinidad and Tobago. It's very difficult to get pellets, and they are needed for transportation of food to the Europe. So he decided, he also saw that there is a lot of husk waste. When you are producing the cocos, you have a lot of husk. And it was burned, and it was a huge waste problem in, in the country. So he decided to produce pellets and to work with local people, and this is how he ended. He, he now works, uh, he solves the deforestation problem because he's not taking forest for the pellets. Um, it's easier to transport. It doesn't need pest treatment because you have to treat uh, the wooden pellets if you want to use them. And he doesn't have to burn them because they are biodegradable. And this is an easy solution. Cocoa pellet showing how to, how to solve the problems in the country with just simply thinking differently. Uh, Bolt threads, we're already using the uh, silk proteins from spiders and they produce the um, large quantities uh, of fabrics and garments and they're selling quite completely different concept of the clothes. And it's very easy to recycle and to reuse. Sweet root, I don't know who knows that restaurant in Vilnius. This is the only one sustainable, really, really sustainable restaurant in Vilnius. They are offering seasonal local food. Seasonal local food. It's expensive, yet. But, but um, there are other restaurants who have also similar concepts. They, they offer... Uh, they offer um, uh, the concept from uh, from head to tail, so that they are not uh, they are not having any waste, and uh, yeah, things are changing, and I think we will have more and more examples with futurepreneurs, because tomorrow is waiting for your solutions, and number of spheres you you are needed. The digital things, the mm, new space, medicine, mobility, all those spheres are just waiting for the solutions. And responsibility is about intergenerational agreements because it's long term solutions, you have to understand that, and it's intersectoral agreements. Yeah, so you have to integrate. You have to understand your impacts, to integrate into your business, and to think how to serve to the well-being of everybody. Because I think that being not responsible, um, being not sustainable, it's not only not fashionable, but it's just not possible anymore. Well, group work. I thought that you have some... some... Uh, some things to write down, yeah, you do? And I would like you to think about what, definitely you all have already some business idea. What do you want to solve? How your solution will contribute to sustainability? 
and think what is happening. Try, I, I, I know that right now during this exercise, it will be rather difficult to find some solutions, but go deep inside, try to understand the causes of things, try to understand why it's happening, try to think how you can improve that and commit and do it. And for that, you have to think uh, about the central challenge, what kind of negative effects, and what impacts, why those things are happening. Think about solutions and choose the best solution to solve it. Yep. And we will use maybe half an hour? 15 minutes? Okay, 15 minutes for that quickly your exercise and then we will ask some of you to present May I ask a yes like how do you deal with sustainability and price cuz then not correlated at all i would like to eat organic and sustainable and everything but it's cost three times more and me as a student i cannot afford it in the first place it's wonderful uh, the the flooring idea but then you, have, you require every five years to spend more money for the flooring. So as a company, what would you do? Yeah, um, I, could, I could just uh, suggest you an example about flooring. That's how we solved. We, we've just moved, moved to the new office here in Vilnius. And we had to renovate it. We're renting the office, but usually we're renting it for 10 years, not, not for a short term. And we wanted ecological flooring. We looked at the prices, and ecological flooring that has uh, German uh, Blue Angel, the eco label, it costs a lot, really a lot. It's 80 euros per square meter. That's not for us. We're in the mental NGO, we don't have money. Uh, we looked at the wood, it's too expensive. And then we were just thinking like, what are other options? And suddenly it came to our mind, clay. Clay. And we found a guy who is making clay flooring. It's also expensive, but we said then we can do it. And we did it ourselves. And it was not expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean not sustainable? Paper? paper? Yeah. I think paper is rather sustainable because if you would think um, about the cooling energy needed for cooling for servers. No, no, but I mean, if we can make as much impact as we can, we can stop doing this and put it into our phones. Our problem is the problem. Like, is it hard? I think we are underestimating now the importance of paper. I think there are many, many other problems. <laughs> you can do that, yeah. But about still a little bit about the price. Um, just I think the price, the market supply and demand. Yeah. This is the solution, and. Uh, It takes, it just, in my mind, it takes too long. Um, we don't have time anymore. But now the choice is, should we do nothing or should we do something? Okay, I will step up in the front just to explain you in details what we now we're going to do under this little workshop. 
Do you remember the last uh, presentation from uh, launch day? What you did on your paper? An idea? Yes? Do you? Some of you. Okay. So there was like, I just do not remember, f at least 14 ideas presented on your paper. So think what actually, what kind of problem it's so is solving your idea. And then think what causes uh, are of that problem. What, what creates that, pro uh, what, what causes creates that problem. Okay, and then look for, is your solution actually meeting the quality requirements for environment, society, and economy. Just an example, okay? Just an example, you talked, there was like plastic bags, okay? A lot of plastic bags in the market now, so it's a problem, yeah? Because nobody wants you to recycle them or it's difficult to collect them, okay? So who creates that problem? What the causes are of that, yeah? So the causes is, they are really, really cheap. The price is very cheap and it's very convenient for a customer and for businesses to distribute that in the, in the shops. Yeah? So then think, what is the solution? Do it solve this problem or is it just a cause? Okay. If somebody, is it, if someone is unclear, just raise your hand, I will come in person, okay? So start working now.
Okay. So two minutes, okay? So two minutes left and then we'll go to this uh, sharing, sharing cases, okay? Was it easy exercise? Easy? Uh huh. So who would be who would be willing to present the challenge? What kind of challenge you are solving? and the problems and the solutions may be preliminary or where should you be moving we have we have not much time probably for two three groups to present who would like to share and to receive some advices from everybody feedback please maybe no? Please, no? This group is very still. One minute. Okay. Ladies, please. <laughs> yeah, you can do from, yeah. Explain the idea. So, there's a lot of problems like big prices of legal services, reachability of legal services, availability of legal services, reduced legal work quality due work overload, no alternative legal services, and big paper waste. And it's caused that there's a monopoly of legal services, lack of public defenders and funding for public defenders, lack of legal knowledge, and formalized procedures. So we plan to do, to uh, solve this problem, to uh, make uh, legal education in the school mandatory, govern, uh, help government and courts to simplify the procedure and digitalize legal services. And one, the real solution is that we will create one personalized platform where people can create legal binding documents for court or everyday use with the help of artificial intelligence and document scanning programs. Our program will be uh, that it will use data to personalize documents and also explains how to create document and file it after it, the document is created. And the program will be very user friendly. So, uh, we solving social uh, prob problems and also uh, is related with our environment. For example, there will be the paper waste, also the um, traveling because you need to access, uh, like law firms is in the center of uh, city usually, and there are very, uh, there are uh, like, like traffic jams in the center, and it's uh, it's hard for environment, and uh, that uh, it creates a lot of CO2. And also, we help people not to uh, 
uh, waste their time because their time is very valuable and they can create something more exciting than going to the uh, attorney and for the help. So that's all. Excellent. I think if you would calculate how much of CO2 you can save, you can really prove that you are a responsible business. <laughs> yeah. And amounts of paper saved, amounts of um, CO2 emissions saved, indirect impacts like traveling of, your, of clients, potential. Yeah, you can easily show environmental impact and to so social benefits you would contribute to equality probably a lot because, yeah, excellent idea. Who is next? Yeah. Um, uh, so we'll start on um, our main challenge, which is an efficient electrical energy market, and uh, we'll expand more on it. So first of all, one of the causes uh, of the environmental challenges is inefficient use of prosumers' energy. Uh, so uh, what we have in mind about this is that um, peak times when energy is consumed is in the mornings and in the evenings. And most of the energy, or for example from solar, is produced during the daytime. So there's a big gap. And if prosumers don't sell that energy, uh, I should explain uh, what is prosumer. So prosumer is um, a consumer who is generating uh, solar po power, for example, renewable energy, and is also consuming it. And usually they sell the excess to the grid. And um, so, um, basically, what they have—the only solution they have right now—is just selling the energy to the grid. They can just sell it for market price, which is usually set. And well, what we want to introduce, and there's a EU regulation on that um, uh, being pushed around uh, uh, member states, is building a peer-to-peer -peer energy trading platform. And in this way, consumers could sell their excess energy to other consumers, and that will allow them to actually sell it for the bigger price than the market price. And uh, it can also uh, benefit consumers because that would most likely be lower price than uh, the price they pay right now. Also, another environmental challenge is um, pretty low scale of green energy adoption, especially in residential areas. Um, and in order to meet uh, the EU targets, it has to really accelerate and therefore it needs incentives. And one of the solutions we came up with is behavioral campaigns because we believe financial incentives is not enough. It's one of the solutions, but actually it's really important to educate people uh, to expand their mindset on environmental issues and sustainability. And uh, one more environmental and social problem, we would say, is lack of incentives to save energy. And that's what we also try to incorporate in, in the platform. So uh, basically solutions would be behavioral campaigns and financial incentives as well. Also, uh, the platform would incorporate uh, following energy usage, um, giving suggestions how they can actually um, use their energy more efficiently and also demand response uh, feature as well that could be incorporated. And uh, I can give it to Morta. Okay, so social cause uh, is presumers and consumers are not connected. So basically now these uh, presumers are just connected to grid, which is controlled by centralized uh, like energy market. So our solution would be to create online platform where presumers and consumers can share this, like presumers can sell and consumers can buy um, like for the price presumers are like uh, willing to, to sell it. So, as I mentioned, the uh, second like, cause is social and economic, so centralized energy market. So, today, government is uh, in, in, in charge to like, control energy market. So, um, as um, 
uh, Yama mentioned, there's like uh, EU law enforcement uh, to decent decentralize the energy market. So, our what uh, we can uh, do to, so to lobby for supporting the like to decentralize the like uh, the market. Um, and the next the next is economic uh, problem, is like uh, lack uh, uh, or um, like uh, in a, in insufficiency uh, of financial incentives for presumers so uh, we're coming back to like we have to decentralize energy market for that so that's it sounds very professional <laughs> well um, your business itself it's already green business so it's not about uh, not about greening some business so I think it's really really nice idea I would I'm not an energy expert I cannot comment on it but I would advise you really to have uh, deep conversations if you will go in into that topic talk to Ignitas experts and uh, to grid experts, whatever whatever is needed, because you it sounds like very good, but you have to develop it properly further with professionals. Thank you, excellent. <laughs> Last group, who would like to present? Thank you. So we have an idea that it's 12 number, so it's irresponsible water consumption, our idea. The problem is irresponsible water consumption. And in Europe, average 144 liters is consumed by person daily. So it's a really, really huge number. And our idea that the water that comes in the house, some of it that is dirty water goes to the sewage directly, but other water, especially in apartment buildings, could go to some reservoir and to the fil and we would filter it and take and take and reuse it again so it won't be as clean it won't be drinkable but you can use that water for a toilet or for mopping the floor so you can save a lot of water just by filtering so and i think it should be really really helpful because it would save money and yeah so so that's the basic idea That's an excellent idea because the future cities will uh, will will have to be built uh, from well the buildings in the future cities will have clean the air they will have to clean the water they will have the energy production plants the, the buildings itself um, my advice to your your future business would be look at the existing solutions. There are already solutions in, in the market like this, and you just have to, to find improvements and to find application and to make it available to everybody, but I think that's needed. You will have market definitely in the future. Excellent. Okay, it was short presentation. Maybe last one. Somebody? If somebody wants, right? I think you are at the very, the very beginning, and you will, you will have to analyze your impacts anyway. Okay, so thank you, Odrone. Okay, so uh, so what I want to tell you extra. So this is may, might be look. Um, Okay, this is this might look easy, but uh, but that's most difficult part of your job before you're going to solutions, because most of the cases we see that problem solving not the problem itself, but uh, but the, an effect of the problem. So they are mixing problem with the effect. So if you're sol solving an effect and you're providing solution to an effect, so in reality you do not solve nothing. Okay, so if people are consuming, consuming too much vegetables, it doesn't mean that you will solve uh, obesity in some of the countries. So you, look you should look very carefully. Are you really on, the, really on a problem case? Because most people are providing solutions just to an effect. So it's like very temporary, temporary working business. It doesn't solve uh, actually uh, the pain. So where is the pain? So look for that. So because this this the most important part. Because otherwise you're just losing or wasting time trying to find a solution which which does create another problem to the environment. So we what we do want 
that your next business is not a not next problem to environment, society, or co economy. Okay, so it's like if so that's the case like with co um, take away coffee cups. Okay, so co coffee to drink coffee is all right. Okay, so that's not that much big problem. But to take away to in introduce take away cups into your business. That's the, that, that's the problem if the coffee cup is not uh, recycle, is, uh, recycled or not into the recycling system, okay? So then you create another environment problem to someone and who is, who, who, whose fault now? Is the consumer or is the business? Or maybe those who are recycling the waste? So, you see? So that's a very tricky question here. So, look for that. So for you to solve, actually, to see if you're really solving the problem or an opportunity just to see, we have a mentor list on our website. So futurepreneurs.eu slash mentors. So they are available for you guys. So what we see is that people are afraid to ask these, these guys from big companies and just like to write an email saying like, hello, guy, hello sir, I would like to your time. To, to discuss about my solution, does it really it goes into uh, into market as you see? Because the, they have uh, they are already in the market, so they know how the system works. And if you're disruptable into innovation, so then then you really need to talk to them to understand: Do you really are you really disrupting them? Or you or you will provide a new solution? So so don't be afraid to ask us as intermediate to, to help you to contact them. So especially you guys. So that's uh, Lietuvos Energia is just main, main key person you need to contact. And we know them. So they, you need to, to, to see how they look at the future. Maybe you are interfering in some business conflict later on because they want to earn more money and you are, and you are the guys who wants to, that they lose more money, okay? So that's a conflict. So you need to, to find a, an angle of win-win. They happy, people happy, and okay? So that's the, what we're trying to do, okay? So that's, you need some mentors from the large companies to see uh, how you, you just go nice deal for them as well. Because otherwise, it's, uh, it's uh, real life, it's a market, everywhere is money, so to say. So use the mentor list, that's the fir first thing. So what we, so, what we actually did, uh, I don't know how many used, uh, we, we tried to, to ask you to use the online version, so what we did, so this what you're doing now is the second, second slide from your pitch deck, okay? So we are preparing for demo day, okay? We want that you earn some awards, money, and some glory of the, our supporters. So this is the, your goal on uh, um, global sustainability. And then you provide the problem. So you calculate and measures what is a real problem. Okay, so this is your second slide. And as well, uh, as uh, for the dessert, is the eighth slide. How, how you do positively impact environment, society, and economy. That's the eighth slide of your pitch deck. So this is nice, nice to have. Okay, it's, that's not must to have, but nice to have. So, for, so what we're doing now, so this is like preparing the concrete answers to these on these slides. So because what is the business problem or society problem or envir environmental problem you're trying to solve? And later on you discuss what is the impact. Is it more, more, more negative impact or more, more positive impact? Okay? So this is from the pitch deck. So, so those who were missing and maybe listening online, online so go Go back to page number seven, it's problem solving. Read it carefully, doing like, like uh, first class grades uh, student as a homework. And, and if something you do not understand, just call us on, by mobile phone. So there's mobile phone down below website. So it's not for, for marketing purposes, it's for you just call to us, okay? <laughs> So next week, so will be 26th of February, the same time, same place here. This is 5 o'clock p.m. There will be meeting you with minimal viral prob problem. 
uh, workshop. So it means yeah, you, you have a concrete problem, opportunity, and then we will try to find min minimal viable solution for, for that problem. So that's the next step. So that's it. So th thank you very much. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>